as he beats Ernie Urban out. And, and there's a Ricky Rudd pit, guys. We've got a situation here that I've never seen. I remember I told you all day about how bad their pit stops were. Well, they've got another one. They went down and recruited Bobby Allison's two tire changers to change tires this time because they were having so much trouble with their own guys. They had a problem here as well. This has just been a total disastrous day for the uh, Ricky Rudd team as far as pit stops go. The two tire changers that were there are sitting up on the toolbox with crew chief Richard Broom. I tell you, they've had a, had a bad day all the way around. Carson's been uh, documented. Richard Broom, and I guess Glenn mentioned it earlier, won't be back next year. Uh, Jim... If they were having bad stops, I think that might have been a bad gamble, though, with so many laps left in the race. But uh, he's rolling the dice right now. He's doing what he thinks he has to do to win the race. So Ricky Rudd is the race leader at 320. Here come some of the other lapped machines, Glenn Jarrett. Well, Jeff Gordon's coming down the pit road, guys. The reason that... Let's also give some credit to the driver of that number 10 car, Ricky Rudd. Remember in the years when they said that he was absolutely the master of the road courses? Well, you have to be smooth and you have to have good rhythm to do that. And all the tire guys in the Goodyear building were saying that's what was necessary in order to run well here. Smooth and have rhythm. Here's a guy that can drive with both lap after lap after lap, and it surely has paid off today. He's actually either pulling away or Jared is backing up a bit. It's now three and six. 7 10 seconds from first place back to second largest lead Ricky's enjoyed all afternoon. Eli, when you're in the lead like that, of course, when you go by the flag up here, the flagman is working, telling the traffic to move over. The lead car is coming. It's a great advantage. His personal winning streak alive. You know, it's a, it's a streak that not many people can, can uh, have to brag about a little bit or have under the belt, and we'd love to keep it going. Working awful hard, you know, we roll into every racetrack trying to win every event. We just, we've come up short all year. We've got a couple of second place finishes. we got a third, uh, but that's about the best we've done all year. So it's getting that time of year that, man, I'd love to keep it alive. We're working awful hard. We've got three chances at it right now. Meeting today, next week in Phoenix, and the season finale in Atlanta, but dating back to Ricky Rudd did not make. That's the whole picture of this. He come out. He was he was out there. He didn't have to come in. He didn't have any mistakes to be made, other than great track position, and that's why he's out here. But I think he's the fastest car on the speedway period, anyhow. White flag is in the air for Ricky Rudd. There he is. He comes across the stripe. Final time around the 1.017 mile North Carolina Motor Speedway. It is going to be interesting to hear what Ricky has to say in victory lane. 14 years is what he's going to say. His 17th career win, the 10th win of the season for Ford. Ricky Rudd back in victory lane for the 14th year in a row. And what an unpredictable and unusual day for him as Jarrett finishes second, Labonte third, Irvin fourth, Jeff Burton fifth. Bobby Labonte, sixth. Ricky Rudd's kept his streak alive 14 years in a row. He has won at least one NASCAR Winston Cup race. We'll talk to him as soon as we return, and lots more yet to come from the North Carolina Motor Speedway. You never know in this business. That's why we run them on Sunday. We're coming right back. Welcome back, everybody. The